önce ben size hitap ederek söyleyeyim. Siz e, beyefendinin bugün... Salih Hanım, his, thank you for all the wonderful teaching that you give them. And she feels very uh, lucky and grateful for that. Um, and she asked us to introduce ourselves. Öncelikle programımıza hem de biraz kendinizden söz eder misiniz? I've been doing this work for far too long, really. Um, I was... I started when I was 17, which is very young, working with uh, families where there was somebody that was handicapped in the family, and also working with elderly people. And in those days, the only qualification I needed was a driving license. If I had a driving license, I could do the job, because we had to go and visit people in their own homes. So this took me to lots and lots of homes. And then when I was about 22, they decided that I had to qualify, and so they sent me to college. That's really when I started to know what I was doing. Would, would you say that the problems you experience, people experience in families in England and in Turkey are similar? Um, well, there are similarities, but I think there are kind of trends that are different in um, England compared with Turkey. So, for example, in England, we have a lot of what we call blended families now. These are families from different races that have come together. You know, so really we're aligned to our third or fourth generation of, um, of people that have immigrated from the colonies into England and, uh, and now have lived there and become indigenous to England. And of course, that's difficult because there's a merging of, of many cultures. Now in Turkey, we see something far more subtle, in a sense, because um, there are different regions of Turkey. I mean, what I've discovered from working in Turkey is that you always have to ask somebody what village they come from to understand something about who they are. You know, and sometimes I think there are two countries. There's <coughs> Turkey and there's Istanbul. And Istanbul is like a big pressure cooker. You know, it, mm -hmm. it's like a stew. There's all these different cultures, all these different values and ideas, all, all cooking here. <laughs> evet. You know, it's very different. Now she's asking this question from the Turkish perspective. Um, if you look at families, a couple comes together and children are added onto it. And um, the people realize how their behavior influences each other. They become a system and they um, influence each other. And do they see their responsibilities as problems arise? Do they see them as individuals, themselves as individuals? How aware they are? I mean, most of us. I mean, most of us are, are just aware of our own world, aren't we? I mean, it's like we're in a film and we star in our own film and this film is about me and there are these other actors that come into it and, you know, therefore we are the centre of our of our film. We are the star and, you know, we're either a tragic star or a, a hero or whatever. That's how most people see themselves. And I don't think that, you know, people in Turkish families are any different from that. Um, particularly when they're in their teenagers, their adolescents. When they're younger, perhaps they see their parents as being the heroes. But once they become adolescent, they become the heroes of their own film. And of course, that's an illusion, really. But that's how people see themselves. Are people uh, trying to play their roles well? Well, some people are trying to play their roles well, and some people just don't realize that it's a role, and some people don't realize that, you know, they think they're acting out of their own convictions, but actually they've learned to do certain things because they've been brought up to do certain things, or the advertisements say they should do certain things, you know. They say, you know, if you drink this water, this will make you attractive. I mean, it's nonsense, isn't it? Water is water. Normal bir aile var ve sorunlu değil. Let's say there is this family, couple together, mm -hmm. they get together and they get married. They, nobody wants to have problems or expect to have problems. They might have fears, mm -hmm. but nobody plans mm -hmm. to have problems. Um, what happens that create problems? What sort of behaviors, thoughts, attitudes? lead to problems in families. Well, it's a very strange thing, isn't it? I mean, first of all, there's a couple coming together, and then there's a marriage, and they're not the same thing, you know, because a marriage is really about two families coming together. It's a much more public kind of event. So 
you know, we pretend that it's about the couple, but actually it's about these wider families. And then there are all sorts of, um, what can I call them, influences that are brought to bear. You know, which family's values are going to prevail? Is it going to be the man's family's values or the wife's family's <laughs> values? You know? And if there's a Teze in one family, is she going to be so important in the other family now that these other th they've been brought together in some way? I mean, everybody's political position is up for negotiation. And if there are sick people in one family before the marriage, it's clear who's going to look after them. But afterwards, once again, it's all up for negotiation. Is it going to be possible for this couple to look after this sick person when they become older or more infirm? So in a sense, you know, we're brought up to believe these fairy stories, like all the problems actually take place before the couple come together and they get married. When they get married, they're going to live ev happily ever after. That's what we're taught through our children's stories. But actually, <laughs> it's the opposite. You know, it's when the family get, when they get married and their problems start, really. So uh, let's say, how can young people look at things? How do they look so that the problems become aggravated in a way? Well, I, I don't know really the answer to that because it, it, it depends. It'll depend on the family's original culture, where they came from, um, what their aspirations are, um, what they're attempting to do with their lives. So it's a very broad question, really. and. I think one of my difficulties is that the only families that I get to see really professionally are the ones that are in, have problems. So I have a kind of very jaundiced view about um, uh, the problems that families have. How would you say Turkish families approach the problems you know, when there is a conflict between uh, parents? How do they approach? Well, it depends, doesn't it? I mean. I mean, I think, I don't know whether it's just true of Turkish families. I mean, if there's a conflict between parents, then in some way, some child is going to be made to, um, we have a technical term, we call it being triangulated. It means because they have to look in two directions at the same time. So there's like a triangle, there's the conflict between the parents, and then the child is kind of split in some way. You know, so it all becomes very politicized, not in a big, with a big, part of political P, but with a small family P. So can you like, can, can you still love grandmother? And of course, in Turkish culture, sometimes if, I, if you don't like my mother, I won't like your mother. And of course, the children don't know how to approach the grandparents in that sense. That's right. That's right. You see, I mean, I think one of the things that I always say is that if you want to understand a family, you have to understand at least three generations of the family. So I think that's, you know, I think it's very important to keep that in mind. The younger generation's always trying to make sense of the immediate family history. What makes a person unsettled and feel uneasy when everything was going, you know, smoothly, suddenly? What sort of things make the person, what sort of attitudes and thought processes? Yeah. Well, you see, I anticipated a question something like this. I mean, it depends where you look. An individual depends where you look. The story will change. So, I mean, if we look at this woman, I mean, what can we say about her? She's depressed, perhaps. Uh, but why is she depressed, you know? Maybe she has some chemical imbalance in her system. You know, perhaps she needs some medication. Perhaps there's an onset of a, a genetic illness. These are the kind of stories that we tell about individuals. You know, but supposing we, we change the picture slightly. So, so now why is, she, why is she sick, you know? I mean, who is this man? I mean, is he her husband, perhaps? And who is this shadowy person in the background? What's he just said to her? Maybe she's not depressed. Maybe she's simply upset. Does this, does this husband treat her well? Or is he being rude to her at the moment? So the stories change. Let's say that they're a family. Now there's a family of three people. So why would she be depressed now? I mean, perhaps she's got um, uh, 
some sort of natal depression. Perhaps she, she doesn't have enough money to feed the baby. Perhaps, perhaps he likes to spend his time in the chai bach say, like <laughs> all men do, you know, and he's not coming home. Perhaps it she doesn't have any friends. Where are her friends? So now we're telling very different stories depending upon where we go. And this is really where it stops for us as therapists. We stop with the family. But, you know, some of your viewers may know that this is actually taken from a, from a painting. Oh, oh, here we are. Oh, sorry, a bigger family. Forgotten. A bit of conflict in the family, perhaps, is upsetting. So we can, we can stop here. What we're not allowed to ask questions about as therapists is or the economic situation that's going on in the background. Mm -hmm. You know, but these are all societal influences. They'll impact upon every family in different ways. So it's a complex question. We're all we're locked into a series of, of, of systems that focus us in different ways and depends on where you enter the system, depends on what the result's going to be. Mevcut ufak. Now, let's think of a manageable problem that a couple experiencing, young couple, uh, that could be to do with their families, that could be with each other. Um, how do they approach? How could they approach and how do they approach? And she told this story about, you know, Black Sea region, Temel. Uh, when their house was fire, they told him, your house is on fire. And he said, well, tell my wife, because we divided our chores, and mm -hmm. she's disposable of the household. <laughs> you know, I think one of the things that people fail to realize is that, you know, the, the family never ends. Okay, and when a couple has problems, they tend to be thinking just about themselves. It's very immediate. But often, asking questions like, how would you like your children to be when you're when they're your age. Would you like them to be the same or would you like them to be different? You know. Um, what are the most important things for your um, grandchildren to experience? Is it most important that they're rich and wealthy or is it most important that they're healthy or is it most important that they're in good relationships? Is it good, most important they have time for recreation as well as for work? Okay. If your children were to have these um, attributes when they're at that age, at your age, what would you need to change now? What would you have had to learn from your parents that you haven't realized that would enable you to make that change? Is there anybody in your family of origin that knows how to do what you need to do to make, to help your children become how you want them to be? And if so, who? And what's their story? And how did they learn it? If you could travel backwards in time with a magic carpet, and give your parents what they needed to know so that they could have taught you that as a child, you know, what would those children, what would those parents have been like? And how would you have experienced your childhood if you were to grow up from then into the age you are now? Without changing anything in your history, how would your attitude towards certain events have been different? Okay, so these are sort of questions that people can ask. But the difficulty is that, People on their own don't tend to ask those kind of questions. I'm not trying to sell the idea of therapy here or therapy, because I think it's things that friends can ask. You don't need to be a psychologist in order to ask these kind of questions. But you just need to know that these questions, these are very simple conversational questions, are important. And, yes. and of course, part of the purpose, it just takes people outside of themselves, and it puts them in touch with the resources that they already have. Yeah, let's think there is this family where um, the husband is um, very attached to his family and um, and the, he's trying to give the message to his family that actually they are the most important, not his wife. Mm. And, um, and they, uh, at the end of an interaction, they, the husband says, uh, like, I know why you are doing it, you know, like, critical, you know, and um, they don't really ask why they are doing it. They give the answer, critical answer, about what they are doing, and they judge. And they don't leave any room for uh, self-expression, communication, and um, what can we advise to these people? Well, we can't advise a lot, really, because although there's a lot of information, it's 
incomplete in some sense. The first thing that we don't know is how this, uh, how, how this family is when they're on their own, when they're not at the um, husband's families. And that makes a big difference, because we don't know whether or not we're dealing simply with a critical husband, or we're dealing with a husband that's critical just within the context of um, his own extended family. On their own, they are, he, the, the husband asks a question and actually gives the answer himself, and it's negative. He attributes it to her. He doesn't let her express what she really thinks and oh. why she did something. Mm -hmm. So he has to manage her th thought process. Okay. Well, we would need to know more about the history, I think, whether this was always the case. You know, and how they really started as a couple, where they met, and what the circumstances. You know, I mean, these stories sometimes, but not always, um, start off with a political marriage. Now, I'm not saying that in your hypothetical case this would be true, you know. So if anybody's in this situation, don't immediately assume that what I'm going to say applies to them. Just talking in general terms. But, you know, sometimes men marry for the wrong reasons. So, for example, sometimes a man who is ambitious will marry into a family that is wealthy, um, who's, um, um, who's Who, who have a generation of an established business. And what they really want to do is either to have some sort of support for their own business or else they want to become the eventual m managing director of the company. But, you know, people are intelligent. So this person won't become the managing director of the business and he won't get a lot of support. And uh, actually, the reason behind his marriage will fail. And of course then he will become very critical but there could be other reason biz konuşan bir aile yapısına mı sahip would you say that turkish families are trying to solve their problems by talking do we talk to each other çözüm alıyor muyuz um i think turkish families talk to each other more than english families and northern european families certainly but um i don't know whether that's an advantage or a disadvantage you know because i think the more people talk sometimes the the um, the less people are able to listen. So it's interesting. I mean, one of the things we often have to do with families is just to slow everything down and help family members to be able to listen to each other. You know, in some families, there's a kind of a psychological deafness that prevails, you know. And so um, it's not that the message isn't being delivered, but it's actually not being heard, it's not being registered. The lady, uh, he, 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 she's in her middle ages, and she just realized how she's influenced from her family, uh, the way she is now. Mm -hmm. And uh, even though she's very open to development, watches programs like that, reads a lot, she realizes the influence. But uh, when she is with her family, she falls back into the same patterns. Yeah. And she's wondering how she can protect herself from this falling back to her old ways. You know, your family has all these different hooks, if you like, psychological hooks, little phrases, little terms, little tones of voice. All these things, there, they, they, they really anchor your behavior. You know, so it's not always even what families say, it's also the way that they say it, okay? So, in a way, you get stuck back into the family story. I think that's what this lady is saying. She'd like to be able to write her own story, but she Can finds herself back in the family story and her place in the family story. And usually, um, people you know, have been trying to write their own story for a long time. So somebody in the family says, you're like this, you're a nasty person, perhaps. The response is, well, you don't really know me, how would you know? Okay. And that's always the conversation. No, it's elaborated in different ways, but it's broadly something like yeah. that. Um, and so continuing that conversation isn't ever going to move a person on. So the first step really is to be able to, to, to move outside of the family and see yourself in the family as an outsider would see. Okay. 
with, I mean, this is what a therapist is, really. A therapist is somebody that's outside of the family, that watches the family, and then feeds back information into the family about what they've seen. But you don't necessarily need to, a therapist to be able to do that. All you need to be able to do is to detach yourself in some way. So the question you, that this lady needs to ask herself is, if I was to follow her around with a video camera all day when she was with her family, what would I see, what would I hear, um, what would the hooks be that force her to be this way in her family? And if she was to watch that film in which she's on the television as one of the actors in a, I don't know, a soap opera or something like that, a drama, what advice would she give that person that she's watching? And, and, and that's like the beginning of a way forward, perhaps. Benim biri iki buçuk, üç buçuk yaşında, biri iki yaşında iki çocuğum var. Ee, çocuklar... This lady, uh, she finds herself very irritable following having her children, even though her husband is okay with her. Mm. Uh, two year and three and a half year old, two children. She finds herself shouting at them and they are frightened of her and she doesn't know what to do about it. What mm -hmm. can she do? She like, mm -hmm. Do you want to ask questions? Mm -hmm. she, she's on the line daily. Mm -hmm. Being a mother is probably the hardest work that you can do. And, of course, there are extremes. I mean, there are people that aren't very good mothers. Um, but by and large, being a mother doesn't mean being perfect. Now, the question she's raising is she's shouting, she's unhappy and she shouts at the children and they're frightened of her. Well, of course, that's not good and she knows that. And that's the first step, really, to change it. But children don't... Um, automatically fall out of love with their mother because the mother shouts at them or even frightens them. So, um, I mean, I, I think, you know, perhaps she needs to be looking for some traditional forms of support, which means other mothers with children, people that will um, be friendly towards her and share some of the same difficulties. And she needs opportunities. She's, the children are still quite young, but they're old enough, really, to spend time with other children. You know, and I'm not talking about her leaving the children somewhere else, mm. you know, but I'm talking about mothers coming together with their children, and the children will look after the children for a while, and she'll have an opportunity to have some adult conversation. I think, you know, she's, she's, she's talking a, about something rather that's quite normal for people with young children, you know, and it's not uncommon, unfortunately, for husbands to spend some time away, you, you know. It would be good if she could talk to her husband a bit about that, but you know, it, it, it is a, a fairly traditional pattern, I think. But, so let's go for the traditional remedy, women <laughs> being together.